In this lecture, we will learn about Rank-Nellithi theorem. This theorem is normally defined for a matrix, say of size m by n, and it states that rank of the matrix plus the nullity of the matrix is equals to n, and that is equals to number of columns in the matrix A. Here, rank is the rank of the matrix and it is also the dimension of range space of the matrix A, which is written as dimension of range space of A. So here this Kelly graphic R stands for range space of matrix A. And the rank is also equals to dimension of the column space of matrix A. And nullity is the dimension of null space of the matrix A, and which is written as dimension of null space which is denoted by calligraphic n of matrix a and here note that by space here we mean vector space so here we have the range space which is a vector space which is same as column space and we also have null space which is also a vector space and here these dimensions are the dimensions of corresponding vector spaces and if you want to know in more detail exactly how do we find dimensions of vector spaces then you can watch my video on that topic whose link is given in the pop-up card above so let's understand what do we mean by these different spaces in rank nullity theorem so first we move to the range space which is also same as column space of matrix a now let's say this matrix A, which is of size m by n, is the transformation matrix for linear transformation T, which takes vectors from n dimensional space to m dimensional space. Then this linear transformation T in terms of the matrix A can be written as A into x equals to y. Here A is the matrix of size m by n. Here x is a column vector of size n by 1 and y is a column vector of size m by 1. So this matrix A transforms n dimensional vectors into m dimensional vectors and the, the range here is similar to the range defined in regular functions which is a subset of codomain and it is the set of images for all the elements in the domain under the transformation t so here the range space of matrix a will be equals to set of all the vectors y which are m dimensional vectors such that a into x is equals to y and here x belongs to n dimensional vector space so in that sense y is m dimensional image of n dimensional real vector x under transformation t represented by matrix x so ax will give us y now as we have already discussed a is an m by n matrix that means it has m rows and n columns x is n by 1 vector and y is m by 1 vector then this matrix equation ax equals to y can be written as the matrix in expanded form the vector x also in expanded form and vector y also in expanded form you note that elements in each row are multiplied with the vector x to give us the corresponding elements of y vector and in particular the elements of first column of the matrix are multiplied with x1 the elements of second column of the matrix are multiplied with x2 and so on so another way of writing this matrix equation will be like this and here note that i have written each column of the matrix a separately so this is the first column of the matrix this is the second column of the matrix and this is the nth column of the matrix and here 
each element in the first column is multiplied by x1 that is first element of x vector each element in second column is multiplied by x2 that is second element in x vector and so on and this gives us y vector now here if i denote the columns by symbol c vectors then this will be the first column vector this one will be the second column vector and this one will be the nth column vector and here this x1 x2 xn all will be real numbers because vector x belongs to n dimensional real space so each element of vector x will be a real number so here i can write this equation is this x1 into vector c1 plus x2 into vector c2 plus dot 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 plus xn vector cn equals to vector y here we see that vector y is written as linear combination of the column vectors in our matrix a so we can say that the vector y lies in the span of these column vectors and the vector space spanned by the column vectors of the matrix is called the column space of the matrix so this vector y will belong to the column space of a and we know that if rank of the matrix a is r then the number of linearly independent columns in a will also be equals to r and because our column space is spanned by these column vectors and if there are r linearly independent columns in our matrix then the dimension of the column space of a will be equals to r because dimension of a vector space is the smallest number of linearly independent vectors in that space and because the range space of the matrix a is same as the column space of matrix a so dimension of range space of a will also be equals to r next we move to the null space of matrix a which is denoted by calligraphic n of a the null space of matrix a is defined as set of all the vectors in n dimensional space such that the linear transformation of x is equals to zero vector that is null space of a is nothing but the vector space consisting of solutions of homogeneous system of equations ax equals to zero and we know that for a homogeneous system of equations if n is the number of unknowns and that will be the case when a is m by n matrix and x is n by 1 vector then there will be n unknowns and if rank of the matrix a is r then the homogeneous system of equations ax equals to 0 has n minus r linearly independent solutions and because the null space consists of solution vectors of our homogeneous system of equations and in those solutions we have n minus r linearly independent solutions so dimension of null space will be n minus r because dimension of vector space is smallest number of linearly independent vectors in our vector space and let's call this number 2 so here we know that the dimension of range space is r and dimension of null space is n minus r then from these two we can conclude that dimension of range space of a plus dimension of null space of a will be equals to r plus n minus r and that is equals to n so this is our rank nullity theorem